I don't like this hat. I think it's bad luck. No, I do. I think this hat's bad luck. I, I think it's cursed. With bad luck. And I'll tell you why. Because I wore this hat once, you know, in one of the early shows, I guess, maybe the third, fourth show I did. And, and it was a bad show. And I thought, well, it must have been the hat. But looking back, I think maybe the hat was innocent. And then I'm wearing it now, and I can already feel this show begin to suck more than usual. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, normally, if you watch with any degree of regularity, you know this is a pretty lame show, but tonight it's even more lame. Already, and I've hardly even started! It's the hat, the hat's controlling me. Kind of cool though, isn't it? I mean, you, I kind of wish people would wear hats now. Although, uh, the young people, of course, like to wear their hats backwards. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, look at that. All the kids will be doing that now on the Tweety book and everything. They'll be doing all that. The Tweety book. <laughs> The Tweety book. Yeah, you know, you look, wait and see Justin Timberlake's next video. He'll be wearing a hat like this. Maybe. Maybe, maybe he won't because they're, they're bad luck, these hats. Look, it's, the bad luck is transferred to you. You're watching this crap. There you are, bad luck. I'll take it off. Oh, the show's better already. Well, Craig Ferguson. Yep. Hi. Come on in. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. I am your host, Stevie Craig Ferguson. Thank you. That's enough. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's enough. Come on. Now, wait. Please. That's enough. There's a recession on. Come on! <laughs> this is a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. And I'll tell... Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Great news from Wall Street today. Great news. The stock market is up for the second straight day. Hooray! <laughs> I'm glad the recession's over. <laughs> We've been up for the second straight day on Wall Street. If it was an erection, we'd need to call the doctor. <laughs> Apparently. Although some areas the economy's still bad. It's a very sad day for Sesame Street. Here's how bad the economy is. Sesame Street have had to lay off 67 people. Now, all the characters are living in garbage cans. <laughs> and, and Bert and Ernie are getting married just for the benefits. And, and the worst news of all, Big Bird is up in Hollywood Boulevard letting people pluck his ass for 20 bucks. No, I don't know if that's true. That's not being corroborated. That's hearsay. The UN says that the world population could reach 9 billion by the year 2050. 9 billion? Mm, I don't really care either. Uh, <laughs> it'll be that number unless the Octomom stops having kids then. <laughs> <laughs> An Octomom joke? Yeah, why not? Oh, well, that's kind of last week, isn't it? Screw you! <laughs> Anyway, it's not only a great day for, for America, it's a great day for Egypt. What? Yes! 
Archaeologists have found a huge stash of gold near one of the pyramids. It's a very important find. They get the necklaces there, the bracelets, they found some gold nipple rings. <laughs> yeah, apparently the ancient Egyptians liked to play with their Nefertitis. <laughs> You're welcome, ghost of Benny Hill. <laughs> anyway, the gold they discovered uh, may have belonged to a queen named Hatshepsut. <laughs> queen Hatshepsut. At the time of Queen Hatshepsut's reign, she was the richest woman in the world. She was the Oprah of ancient Egypt. <laughs> and they found a golden cat in this tomb. Ancient Egyptians thought that cats represented wisdom. That's why the Sphinx is half human, half cat. I know. <laughs> Very frightening. I, I, do we have a picture of a half human, half cat? There you are, look at that. I scare the pants off you there. <laughs> Can I see that again? Oh. You better answer my question! Anyway, there's a lot of concern amongst the archaeologists that the pyramids are decaying more rapidly than ever. See, the problem is the desert's right there and the wind blows the sand right into their cracks. <laughs> That's the pyramids' cracks, not the archaeologists' cracks. Eh? They've got protective clothing on. <laughs> anyway, Egypt, uh, of course, in its history, you're saying, Craig, I, you're probably thinking, how many times has Egypt been conquered through the years? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what is this, the History Channel? I don't know. But Egypt's been conquered many times down through the years. Uh, the Romans conquered Egypt. Uh, Julius Caesar had an affair with uh, Cleopatra. Then Cleopatra had an affair with Mark Antony. And then uh, now Mark Antony is married to J-Lo. Uh, <laughs> Cleopatra and J-Lo are very different, of course. Uh, Cleopatra was famous for that killer asp. And uh, J-Lo... <laughs> ...is famous for her delightful singing voice. Egypt still influences the world. Today, though, we even have pyramids on the back of our money. In the back of every uh, $1 bill, there's a floating eye above a pyramid. This is to warn us against the dangers of pyramid schemes. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe the danger of taking too much acid. That may be the day. Anyway, ever since, I love ancient Egypt. Ever since I was a kid, I was interested in the mummies in ancient Egypt because my mother went to see a, a King Tut exhibit in London and she brought back this brochure and I thought the makeup looked really cool because the men in ancient Egypt used to wear dark eye makeup around their eyes so the sand wouldn't get in and irritate their eyes. At least that's what they would tell their wives when they get caught. They would... <laughs> oh, no, 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 honey, you've got it all wrong! It's to keep the sand out of my eyes. Because that's how they used to talk in ancient Egypt. <laughs> Honey, what are you saying? <laughs> Did you know, here's an interesting fact about ancient Egypt. Finally, one. Well, here it is. Ancient Egyptians were stoned all the time. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Because their bread had a lot of sand in it. And after years of eating sandy bread, they had... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, tremendous dental pain. It's true, the Sandy Bread would do it. Sandy Bread, by the way, is the name I use to write romantic novels. Uh, <laughs> Bodice Ripper at the Mill by Sandy Bread. You may have read it. Anyway, because they ate the Sandy Bread, Egyptians, their teeth get worn down. They look like British people in drag, ancient Egyptians. <laughs> they were like, eye makeup, and yeah, it was like Monty Python back then. But to ease the pain, they drank a lot of beer and they got stoned off the new wonder drug at the time from the East then, opium. Oh. Is it any wonder I am fascinated by these people? They were stoned, they were drunk, they were working in construction and they were wearing eye makeup. It was my life in the 1980s. <laughs> Do you remember that bangle song, Walk Like an Egyptian, right? Well, Egyptians didn't walk like that. They were stoned all the time. They walked like this. I like that song, Walk Like an Egyptian. But the follow-up didn't do so well. What was it, like, Fart Like a Samoan or something? Like I would like to go to Egypt. I've never been, but I would like to go so I could ride a camel and see the pyramids.
Because the only pyramid I've seen close is the uh, Luxor Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> the Luxor is what pyramids would look like if they'd been decorated by drunken homosexuals. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think they were decorated by drunken homosexuals. No, I do love the Luxor. That's where Carrot Top plays. And, although it's not quite the same as seeing the real pyramids. The real pyramids are surrounded by camels, but the Luxor is surrounded by hookers. <laughs> camels and hookers, both fun to ride, of course. And, uh, and, and if you're lucky, you get two humps. So right there, there's a seven. All right, we better take a break. We'll be right back. We, we spotlight everything that's good about ancient Egypt. <laughs> but we don't wear the unlucky hat. Do you know, I've, I've noticed that even although I got rid of the unlucky hat, the show's still pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> it hasn't gotten any better, let's be honest. I thought once I took the hat off, things would improve, but let, the monologue was terrible. <laughs> I've decided to start doing my own reviews. <laughs> Mr. Ferguson came out here looking like some kind of overstuffed sofa. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I'll do the emails instead, then. Um, do we have time for emails? Oh, what a surprise. We do. <laughs> what a surprise. We have time for emails. We've done 850 of these damn shows. And every night we've had time for email. Except one night we didn't. When I wore that hat. <gasps> This is from uh, Marek in uh, Raikkonen in the Czech Republic. I didn't know we went out in the Czech Republic. <gasps> YouTube. <laughs> they go out in the Czech Republic, don't they? Uh, yeah, the Czech Republic. You know there's people in the studio audience tonight from Holland? Oh, yes. Yeah, Amsterdam's in Holland. I went there once and I can't remember. Small gear, small glass, maybe small beer, small glass, big lump of hash. Uh, Marek says, Dear Craig, what is your favourite iPhone app? I have no idea what that means. No, I tell you my favourite iPhone app, actually, is I have an iPhone. What? You have an iPhone, Grandpa? Yes, I have an iPhone. <laughs> no, I do have an iPhone, and my favourite app on the iPhone, I have two. One is Scrabble. I enjoy the Scrabble. I think that was uh, $3.99, but worth every penny. And another one is one called Aero Weather, which I, because I like to go in airplanes, and it tells you the weather at airports, which is sometimes important. <laughs> That's a Aero Weather. It's free, that one. Free, but you have to buy the iPhone, which is like a million bucks, so right <laughs> Uh, this is uh, from Tracy in uh, Coon Rapids in Minnesota. Minnesota? Minnesota! Oh, yes. Minnesota. Uh, she says, uh, Dear Craig, were you born funny or were you hit in the head by something? I said, No, what happened was that I was just, uh, I went to Amsterdam and. Something happened, I can't remember what it was. I think I must have been hit on the head <laughs> by a giant lump of hashish. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry for, uh, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. I don't know if you know. <laughs> medieval doctors, the expression frog in your throat, it comes from the medieval doctors. I know you said this the last two nights, Craig. Yes, but I'm old and I forget things. <laughs> Medieval doctors used to uh, put, when you had a uh, um, they would put a frog in your throat to get the evil spirit of your cough out of, uh, out of your throat. And of course, you would die of frog poisoning. Uh, that's right, you can die of frog poisoning. Oh, I think I've got frog poisoning, doctor. Yes, but your cough's getting better, so right there. Take your pick, take your pick. What do you want to die of? The plague or frog poisoning? I don't know. Arr! <laughs> 
frog, frog, the great frog poisoning epidemic, which of course decimated Holland right back there. And, uh, in the 1980s, Dutch people were running, screaming from their houses as the frogs wearing clogs. That's right. Frogs wearing clogs. You may remember. No. <laughs> Frogs wearing, clogs, frogs wearing clogs, who later became famous in the poem, A Giraffe and a Half. <laughs> frogs wearing clogs. Are they in that? If they're not, they should be. Anyway, the, uh, the frogs wearing clogs attacked the people of Holland. It was a terrible mess. Um, right. Uh, well, we better move along. Um, this is from Angela in Salt Lake City, which thankfully is in the United States of America. Yes. Oh, no, don't. Uh, Angela says, Dear Craig, do you have a GPS for your car? I don't know how I ever got along without it. Oh, oh really? <laughs> I do, I do have a GPS in my car. Um, but I don't know how to operate it. I, I can't find it. <laughs> it's the hat! The hat made me say that! That's wrong! All right, let's we'll take a break. We'll Welcome to Amsterdam, Mr. Bond. Please don't be alarmed by my pet frog. Cloggy. I only have him because I've got a bit of a... <coughs> there you are. Oh, that's cleared it right up. <laughs> there you go. Oh, -ho! great. Don't blame me, blame the hat. All I'm saying. Anyway, it's a very, uh, you know what, welcome back everybody. I, and it, it is a crazy time in the late night television of which I jokingly am part of. Uh, the, uh, 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 Conan O'Brien is moving to 11.30 uh, uh, and the NBC, Jay Leno is moving to Law & Order. He's five nights a week. Uh, uh, right here at CBS, our executives never stop working to try and deal with this uh, crisis in the late night. It's very we're, I sat down with one of them today. It was an enormously... Oh, wow. I can't <laughs> wow, those keep getting longer and longer. They get quite long, yeah. Exactly. Craig, thanks for stopping by on short notice. It's no problem, Bart. I was, I'm just downstairs. <laughs> In this building? Hmm? Oh. I need to change that. I don't like that one bit. Move, Craig. Uh, uh, oh, right. Uh, Bart, I, I, I got a show to do today. I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of busy. So, uh, what, what's up? Well, it was very exciting. Last week, CBS Research showed highlights of your show to a focus group. Oh, great. Well, I, I want to know what people think of the show. And I kind of want you to know. <laughs> so, what should we do first? The good news or the bad news? Uh, uh, good news. Okie doke. The good news. Uh, is, uh... <laughs> Fine, give me the bad news then. Can you be more specific? Because it's kind of mostly bad news in here. All right, well, what part of the show do people like least? Well, people seem to like the least the sketches. Really? Yeah. When you roll like a flimsy set onto the show and then you have some B-list celebrity insult you? Really? I kind of like those things. That's because you're a moron. They also seem to think it's weird that you wear a wig even when you're playing yourself. I don't do that. Was there anything that they, they, anything they liked? Yes, yes, there was something that they liked very much, and it was... Oh, there it is. The Sweet Release of Death. <laughs> is that something from the show? Is that a bit on the show or something? <laughs> sweet Release of Death. After 30 minutes in the focus group, all of the members were begging for the Sweet Release of Death. <laughs> well, we, we don't have a sketch called The Sweet Release well, of Death. That's weird. If you don't have a sketch, then... then... 
<laughs> oh, well, this isn't really helping, is no, it? Craig? No, 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 it's not, it's not helping, Bart. I'm not the type of guy that enjoys strangers crapping on me. <laughs> I doubt that very much, Craig. I've seen your Facebook page. Is there anything positive in the report? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, there was something positive in the report, oh, Craig. Thank goodness for that. They like your sexual ambiguity. My what? Especially when you say, I'm not gay, I'm not straight, I'm European. <laughs> That's you. That's, That's you. That's exactly you to a T. That was me doing you. Wow. And you're a P. <laughs> I must. I never knew I did that. Well, it's good. To, at least I've got something positive to say. Yes. That's nice to hear. Craig, you know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't we just set aside a time where we can go over the rest of the results in depth, okay? Sure, sure. We'll have another meeting. Um, yeah. Maybe we've had enough meetings. What do you say we do dinner and a movie? <laughs> Maybe we could check out that new picture, I Love You, Man. Uh, from DreamWorks Pictures, opening March 20th. <laughs> what? Did you just ask me for a date there, oh, Mark? No, no, not a date. Just It'll just be a, just be a guy's night out, you know? Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Because my, my mother keeps telling me i got to make more friends my own age and stop sitting on her couch every night. You still live with your mother? Oh, no, my mother's dead. <laughs> but she tells me things. It's kind of like the ghost whisperer, you know, only with saggy ghost boobs. I'll just pretend I didn't hear that. Okay. Pick me up at 7.30, though, okay? Sounds All great. Right. All right, good to see you. Uh, My first guest tonight is in a new film called The Skeptic, which opens May the 1st. He's also in the Private Practice Show, which is on Thursdays on ABC. <laughs> Take a look at this. And uh, while you're at it, will you consider backing off with Joe? She's in my office, and her body is a mess. Her muscle pain is unreal. Well, she's injured. She, she was injured before the attack. You were treating her. For a rotator cuff tear, she was getting better. Her treatment was nearly done. Since the attack, her injuries are not muscular. Pulling up those memories, that's what's eating her. If I can walk her through the attack, then I can desensitize her to the memory. She wants to get this guy who did this to her. So she remembers she can put him away and have her life back. That's interesting. Sometimes you think it's better to know, and others, denial works for you. <laughs> I'd love to be a TV doctor instead of this crap. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna need some... FCCCs and some penicillin and some other things. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm better off where I am. All right. Please welcome Tim Daly, everybody. Tim Daly. Hello, Hello, Mr. How are you, Tim? I'm well. Now, listen, the last time I was on the show, yes. uh, you had lost your watch. And yeah, I, I got did, it back. And I did the Craig Ferguson bailout. I gave you my watch. This time, a new hat. A hat! Thank you! To a break lucky the hat. curse of the old hat. All right. And it has your initial on it. Mm. See? For Craig. Oh. So, wow. No, did you... Isn't it? Come on! <laughs> I gave him a new hat. Ooh. I mean, did you think we planned? I didn't plan that. This really? You a, really brought me a hat? I brought it from my suitcase, yes. You, it's, it's <laughs> this my is hat. your hat? It's got my well, it's got your head goodies and stuff in it. In it, yeah, it. But, you know. <laughs> let me okay. let me put it on then. Okay. There we go. Oh, uh, look at you. Hang on. Your, yeah. This is the real, if you want to see the real thing, it's this. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> that's that to me. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, uh, I think it's better on you. Yeah, no, I, I think it's better on you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do you want the big golden e ancient no, Egypt that's, hat? No, that's fine. No, the unlucky hat, no, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. It's, 
It's not unlucky to you, it's just unlucky to me. It may be lucky for you. No, it's unlucky to pretty much everyone <laughs> that comes in contact with us. Yeah, it's a pretty unlucky yeah, hat. A, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, you're, you're right. It's, it's not actually from order. ancient Egypt. It's uh, Oh, it's, really? No, it's from a... <laughs> Don't you know anything? Oh, see, there you go with the TV doctor thing. <laughs> Do you enjoy doing the TV doctor? I do. I, yeah. I mean, you know, I play this doctor of alternative medicine, this complementary medicine doctor, which is very interesting because I get to do all the... the what is complementary medicine? It's oh, like you say, say you, thank you, you for great. that, that horrible great. cold that you have. Yeah, thank you, you for that. Oh, your cold's yes. lovely. Yes, that's really nice. That's a beautiful hernia. That's the hernia. best broken arm I've I ever seen. I love your hernia. Uh, no, I guess it's stuff like, you know, acupuncture and... and acupuncture? Uh, yes. I've I, had that. I know. Has yeah. it something? I've had it too. You really? like it? Yeah. Oh, I like acupuncture, that herbal medicine. You know, Oriental medicine, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's what I do. Yeah, Where did you get your acupuncture done? I mean, what part of your body? Um, you know, actually. Oh, I want to tell a story, but I really can't. Uh, oh well, you've come to the right place. Because there's an. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not helping me here, Tim. <laughs> on the on the on the set, there's this acupuncture chart. And right. there's this one point, there's, it's, a, it's a man, clearly a man on the acupuncture chart. And no, you can a, tell by his penis. <laughs> yes, right, as a matter okay, of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to kick your ass, <laughs> as they say. Uh, right. Yeah, you can tell by his penis. And somewhere between his penis and another part of his body that you can't talk about on TV, right. there's apparently an acupuncture point. I know it. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. Well, you seem to think I'm in some way tainted by oh. knowing that information. Okay. No. But what's, what's funny about it is that every time... Is that an acupuncture? It is. Every time... No, no, when I'm an acupuncture, yeah, buddy. Yeah, me neither, pal. Yeah, yeah. But every time we do, we do a scene on that set, somebody has to go and put a piece of sort of uh, mole skin over that, that particular... Mole skin, you say? Well, to hide the, the point, because right. they apparently... No, they why, don't do you, want... why does a mole have to die so that you don't... <laughs> Why don't you just take the chart down and put another chart up? I, that's a very good question. You put a, a, a rush poster or something like that. Something that, that an alternative medicine doctor would have in his office. A rush poster or something by Blue Oyster Cult, maybe, or something. <laughs> but that, then an oyster would have to die. The Blue Oyster Cult. No, 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 no. You know nothing about alternative rock, Tim, I clearly. Don't, I don't Actually, I don't know that Blue Oyster Cult uh, count as alternative rock. Did you ever go and see Blue Oyster Cult or I Rush? Never did. I never did. Rush are Canadian, you know. I know. Yeah, Isn't can that odd? Canadian rock band. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're the only one. Uh, yeah, do, rock and roll doesn't seem like a very Canadian pursuit to me somehow. We Although see, Neil Young... Neil Young's Canadian, there you yeah, are. Or um, used to be. Well, no, he's still Canadian, he, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You used to be something else, right? Now you're American? I'm American now, yeah. Putatively? I was never Canadian. I know that's... I, a, that, that's for damn sure. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I see the interesting thing about Canadians that I always think is that they're very terribly polite people, always saying sorry, everything's nice, uh -huh. and they're very friendly. You put a hockey stick in their hand, they turn into psychopathic killers. Well, it's, it's all that, all that repression, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, and you see the Canadian Olympic team, they're like, we're number three. We're yeah. number three. It's very odd, that whole psych yeah. psychological Yeah, no, they're, they're, they are. Do you ever go up to Canada much? Uh, not anymore, not after I just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hockey players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to do yeah, that. They, they will hurt you, these people. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Do you play hockey? Are you a sportsy guy? I am a sportsy guy. As a matter of fact, the reason I have that silly hat that's over on the chair now uh, yeah. is because I'm going skiing tomorrow. I, I feel the need to endanger myself every so often, so. Skiing's not that dangerous. I've done it. <laughs> well, what kind of skiing are we talking about? Down the, downhill. Downhill skiing? Oh, yeah. I see. The, the, the dangerous kind. Yeah. I like to just ski either along a straight line or uphill. <laughs> I often do uphill skiing. It slows you down, but it's, uh, you know, it's safer that way. You know, uh, I've got responsibilities, you know. I know you do. I know yeah. you do. What about the, uh, the car racing? Do you do the car racing? Well, I'm about to go and, and uh, race in this uh, Long Beach Grand Prix Celebrity Pro-Am race, but I have to learn how to do it. And I have very low expectations, but once again, I feel obliged to scare the crap out of myself every decade or so. So I think I'll give it a try. I know, will you do the skiing before or after the, uh, the, the car race? Uh, before. Oh. Yeah. you living well, on the edge, then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, not, not that close to the edge. I mean, a, All right, you're, you're kind of I in the middle quite the comfortably. Edge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't sound the same. Woo, living in the middle quite comfortably. Yeah. 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 It's not really that, that frightening. Yeah. What kind of car do you drive, though, in these, in these races? Uh, I don't know. 
Oh, that's you don't even know? Well, it's the Toyota, so I assume it's, it's not a, a Chevy. I yeah, assume yeah, it's it's going to be a or, uh, or a Ford, which make a fine product. The Ford Motor Company. <laughs> they make the greatest American car. What's wrong with that? Tim Daly, everybody. He's insane. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with Dr. Carter. The cost of death. The social and economic value of ancient Egyptian funerary art in the period. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. I was just reading a book during the commercial break. <laughs> Craig, you can't possibly be that brainy. Oh, can't I? <laughs> but my next guest wrote this. I won't let her talk about it, clearly. But it's about ancient Egypt. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a coincidence. She's a good friend of the show. She's an archaeologist and an Egyptologist. I didn't know the... You know. Anyway, I, uh, please welcome Cara Cooney, everybody. Dr. Cara Cooney. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. What? I feel like you're stalking me. I'm not stalking this you. This is talk show stalking. No, 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 the no. The whole monologue, the book, the the hat. Yeah. The... I was just trying to make you feel comfortable, that's all, because I knew you're an creepy. Egyptologist. I thought if I threw in a few things about Egypt, maybe you would calm down. <laughs> Clearly I was wrong. Fine. All right. Do you ever go uphill skiing with Tim Daly? Yeah. What about that? <laughs> No, I, I can't I, believe you just showed this that, on I know, this national is, this television. Is, That's it's hey, bizarre. This is a very expensive book, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's like one hundred and twenty dollars because it sells in euros. It's Leiden University. You keep talking about Amsterdam, right? Right. Yeah. It's right next door. So you go to Schiphol. What? Excuse Schiphol. Me? The, the, it's the the airport right next to oh. Amsterdam. So you fly into Schiphol. Instead of going to Amsterdam, you go the other direction. You go to Leiden. That's where this book was born. So it's 80 euros, but if you transfer that into dollars, like 120, 140 dollars, you can't there's, get it on Amazon. There's not, there's not even so you can show in it, it, but they can't buy it. And they only, you know, it's for institutions, it's for academics. academics. Yeah. I mean, so you know, they can try well, I mean, to buy it, but um, it, well, they, there's they not that they, many. Look, I'm, I don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want to buy it. I know. It's, it's, I, and I'll tell you why. It's too ahead of them. It's too uh, because this is this is your experts book on ancient yeah, Egypt. Yeah, what I yeah. what I want to do is get a brief overview of ancient Egypt uh, for the folks here who are clearly fascinated by the right whole here, thing. Right I now, mean, when, seven I, well, when I, I put that, yeah. Um, that's such a hard question. Where do I start? I mean, we're well, three thousand years of history. Three thousand years of history. So you start around three thousand BCE, and then it all falls apart with the Mark Antony Cleopatra debacle. So oh, really? then they become part of the Roman province, and that's thirty. BC and then it's a disaster after that. But I mean the thing about Egypt that's the most extraordinary is that you've got continuity the whole way through. And 3,000 years unchanged? It's not unchanged, but the religion's the same, the language is the same. It, it changes through time, just like English. You know, you listen to Shakespeare in English, it sounds different yes. than English now. Right. So ancient Egyptian, you know, if they heard a bunch of Middle Egyptian and they were speaking late Egyptian, they'd be like, what the hell is that? It sounds right. really they, weird. So it would be a little bit different. But the Egyptian language, hieroglyphic language script, I mean, like? it's, it, nobody knows. Right. Because it's... The ancient Egyptians didn't have vowels in the in the way that they well, wrote. Well, they would go say so, but they, would they say they the things like would they the say vowels. owl eye sideways head? You know, like like they're writing. Like if you know, you know, their writing's all like the sideways owl, head. Uh, the owl go, is owl eye sideways head, cat dog man. You know, the owl is an M. It's it's an the M. owl's an M. It's an M. I like the it was letter an M. M. The, no, it, that's the quail chick. The quail chick is an ooh. Well, You've been they, trying to study hieroglyphs on your own. Why didn't you call me? Well, what? I, what I wanted doing? to impress you with my knowledge oh of hieroglyphics. My God. The quail chick is an M. That's well, not I, thought the, I thought the owl was an ooh because owls go ooh. No. And I thought that's why they had an owl. The owl is an M. It's a preposition for M, but it's also just a letter. So it's a, it's a collection of, of signs. Some of them are phonetic, right? right? So M, P, B, all of these other things. And some of them are, are sent signs, what we call determinatives. Uh -oh. So if I wanted to write the word house, right. pair in ancient Egyptian. So I do a P, which is just a little rectangle, right. and then an R, which is a little, it looks like a little mouth. 
Right. And then I put a little house sign underneath it. Wait, so you just draw a house. house. You want to draw a house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just do a house. It's a, the Egyptians believe the hieroglyphs, were the, they call them medu nature, they call them the, the script of the gods. Oh. That when you actually write something down, it comes into being in the next life. Really? So this is sacred stuff. You put this on a temple wall, that will come into being in the next life. Was everybody very literate? Were they, were they poor no, people? No, no, or it was no, just no. the priests and stuff were literate then? Five percent of society right. could really participate in all of this and, and were able to read and write, even able to afford coffins and, and all well, that. Yeah, so but it's, it's why are you very so fascinated percentage. with death, by the way? What is your thing with death? <laughs> I don't yeah. Um, but I am fascinated with death. But but in a who's very, this guy here as well? That's I, I, a lady. She, that's a lady. She lives in Frankfurt now. It's a lady. Really? Um, she and, doesn't uh, look German to me. I got to be honest. <laughs> She's in a museum called the Liebig House, and she has three coffins there. And I spent many days with her, you know, looking at her. But actually, her mummy's not there. It's a weird thing. The Europeans would go into Egypt. They would find these lovely coffins, you know, triple set. You know, fits one inside another, inside another, like a set of Ru Russian oh, like Yassine dolls. Like the dolls, right? Oh, that's so adorable. She has three. It's yeah. So cute, yeah. So she has three of those, but they took her mummy out, and nobody knows where the mummy is. <gasps> I know. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever get freaked out if, like, if you're working late at night and uh, and uh, you know, and there's like you know there's mummies and dead bodies around, and maybe you're wearing a little outfit and it's hot, and you take your glasses off and you let your hair down? <laughs> Does that ever happen? No. Okay. No, but but in Cairo. When I, I worked on a lot of coffins for this book, and a lot of them were in Cairo, and there the bodies are still inside of the coffins. Oh. And they're smelly, and they're just really? kind of... Smelly? Yeah, it's strange. It's not like... Well, I've actually never smelled a fresh, rotting, dead body. Yeah. But There's I imagine... no business like show business. <laughs> I imagine it would smell bad. Yeah, but a, sure. a 3,000-year-old dead body, it smells musty, and, you know, yeah, if like... it's badly mummified, it doesn't smell very good. Right. Um, you want to be cremated? You want to be buried? Which do you want? I, mean, I think probably. Uh... There's a lot of choices. No cremated. A lot of choices. Cremated. You go to your local funeral parlor, and they're going to be like, "We can do this." Well, this, I, they're this. not going to be asking me, want? are they? I mean, I. They could. You could decide this in advance, plan it out in advance. All right. Well, you know, they're well, the commercials. Do you want your well, loved ones to make these choices for you, or well, will you make it for them? Well, you, you, could you do it in you've advance. got, you've seen all the options. What would you do? Ah, cremated. cremated. Or put cremated. me in one of those little cardboard boxes and just throw me in a hole. I don't really care. After seeing all the trouble people go through, it's not worth it. Really? It's kind of stupid. Yeah, and then you get somebody like you coming along a couple of thousand years later, digging up. Oh, look, a fever! <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. It's lovely to see you again. Dr. Cara Cooney, everybody, we'll be right back. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? Look well, my people. Look well upon my strange bejeweled crown. For I will wear it no more. Because, just as I suspected, tonight's show sucked. Which just goes to show you that something funny we'll add later will be <laughs> I'm going to give the hat away but not in a competition I'm going to give it to uh, somebody in the studio audience and uh, and I know that there's been a lot of trouble recently come with me if you will uh, there's been a lot of trouble recently I'll go into the dark but just follow the glimmering hat there's been a lot of trouble recently between America and Holland People have been saying that maybe our countries aren't as friendly as they used to be. We were renowned for our friendliness with those flat-landed, hashish-loving sex maniacs. <laughs> and I'd just like to, on behalf of the American people, present you with a glittery hat. Wear it in Amsterdam. With... Well done, it looks adorable. Between America and Holland is here!